Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Applied Forensic Research Sciences. I'm Malsha Kluratna, volunteer of AFRS. This is what we are going to present today. Another interesting part in forensic biotechnology. Biotechnology tools in forensic science. Do you know what is forensic biotechnology? Forensic biotechnology refers to the application of biotechnology techniques and methods for investigating legal cases. DNA sequencing machine, PCR machine, gel electrophoresis apparatus, spectrophotometry, and microarray are some common techniques and tools used in forensic biotechnology. Okay, let's discuss one by one. Our first topic is DNA sequencing. DNA sequencing is the process of determining the exact order of nucleotides in a DNA sample. Here is a step-by-step -step overview of the DNA sequencing technique. Firstly, the DNA is obtained from a biological sample and DNA is isolated and purified. The sample is fragmented into smaller pieces for sequencing. Then the sample is often amplified using PCR. Each DNA fragment is mixed with primers, DNA polymerase and nucleotides. These nucleotides are labeled with fluorescent tags. Next, the DNA library is loaded into the DNA sequencer. After the sequencing steps, we can analyze data that is used to determine paternity. Next, we talk about PCR machine. The polymerase chain reaction is a method widely used to rapidly make millions to billion copies of a specific DNA sample. PCR method requires DNA or RNA sample DNA primers, DNA polymerase, and nucleotide solution mix containing. PCR process has four steps. Denaturation, annealing, extension, repeated cycles. Now, we watch a small video clip about PCR to understanding.
forensic science PCR used for various applications. DNA profiling, forensic pedigree testing, detection of pathogens. This is the challenge for you. Can you identify who the real father is? You can comment below. Now let us move on to our third topic, gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is a laboratory technique used to separate and analyze mixture of biological macromolecules based on their size, charge and shape. This is the procedure of gel electrophoresis apparatus. Preparation of the gel, loading the gel into the electrophoresis tank, loading the biological sample, applying the electric field, running the electrophoresis, staining the gel, documenting the result. Agris gel electrophoresis is a technique used to separate DNA fragments or other macromolecules, such as RNA and proteins, based on their size and charge. The first step for DNA fragment separation is the gel preparation or gel casting. An appropriate amount of agarose powder is weighed out. For standard agarose gel electrophoresis, larger molecules are resolved better using a low concentration gel, while smaller molecules separate better at high concentration gel. Once the agarose has been weighed, an appropriate buffer, such as TAE or TBE, is poured into the bottle. Agaris does not dissolve until it is heated. Therefore, the solution is heated for a few seconds in a microwave oven. Once the agaris is fully dissolved, the solution is cooled to about 55 degrees Celsius in a water bath. While the agaris solution is cooling, an electrophoresis tank with a negative electrode and a positive electrode is prepared for gel casting. A comb is placed in the tank to create wells for loading samples. Then casting dams are fixed in the tank so that the agarose solution does not flow out during setting. Once the agarose solution has cooled to about 55 degrees Celsius, and before pouring it into the electrophoresis tank, ethidium bromide is added. Ethidium bromide is highly toxic as a mutagen, so it must be carefully handled in a fume hood. Ethidium bromide is an intercalating agent, which intercalates between base pairs of the DNA molecule. When it is exposed to ultraviolet light, it will fluoresce, and DNA bands become visible. The more DNA present, the brighter the band. After addition of ethidium bromide, the agarose solution is poured into the electrophoresis tank. Then, the gel is allowed to solidify at room temperature. Once the gel has solidified, the comb is carefully removed, as well as the casting dams. Next, the gel is submerged in a TAE or TBE running buffer, which used to provide ions that carry a current, and to maintain the pH at a relatively constant value. After the preparation of the agarose gel, the next step is the preparation of the DNA samples. A loading buffer is added to each sample. This buffer contains glycerol in certain dyes, such as bromophenol blue. And it is used to add density to the sample, allowing it to sink into the gel. To provide color and simplify the loading process, and to allow the user to monitor the progress of the separation. Before loading the samples into the wells, a molecular weight size marker, known as a DNA ladder, is commonly used as a standard reference that contains DNA fragments of known lengths. It is loaded into the first well of the agarose gel. Once the molecular weight size marker has been loaded, the DNA samples are loaded into the wells. After adding the samples into the wells, a lid is placed on the electrophoresis tank. Then, an electric current is applied to pull the samples through the gel, 
Based on their charge and size, the DNA molecules will travel through the gel at different speeds. The DNA molecules have a negative charge because of the phosphate groups in their sugar phosphate backbone. Therefore, when placed in an electric field, DNA fragments start moving through the matrix of the gel towards the positive pole. Because all DNA fragments have the same amount of charge per mass, small fragments move through the gel faster than large ones. Due to the relatively small molecule size of bromophenol blue, it migrates faster than DNA. And by optical control of the migrating colored band, the electrophoresis can be stopped before the dye, so before the samples have completely migrated through the gel and leave it. Once the DNA fragments have been separated, the gel is placed under UV light. Then, the DNA fragments can be seen as bands. Each band contains a large number of DNA fragments of the same size that have all traveled as a group to the same position. By comparing the DNA bands of the samples to the DNA ladder, we can determine their approximate sizes. Okay. Our next topic is spectrophotometry. The best analytical method for analyzing a variety of evidence, including bodily fluids, narcotics, and trace components discovered at the scene of the crime is spectrophotometry. Through spectrophotometry, we can identify smokeless powder, analyze fiber, and analyze automotive paints. And spectrophotometry is used in the investigation of biological materials to identify toxins or medications. Our last topic is a microarray. A microarray is a laboratory tool used to simultaneously monitor the expressions of thousands of genes. This can be used in forensic science to identify genetic variation and compare DNA samples. Microarrays can be used for a wide range of forensic applications such as DNA identification, ancestry testing, paternity testing, and forensic DNA phenotypy. Now that we are nearing the end of our presentation. So specifically in this slide, we have included all the references from where we have taken our data for our presentation. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you everyone. I really appreciate that you took the time to be here and listen to my presentation. If you have any doubt, kindly comment below. Please like and share our video. Also don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Bye guys, have a nice day ahead.